Fraud and its cost to taxpayers is the focus of a hearing today on Capitol Hill. And Exhibit A, a series of Scripps reports nationwide, including our recent Contact 5 investigation about the multi-million dollar cost of illegal activity. Kristen Volk from our Washington Bureau has the latest. They want to trade their benefits for cash or banned merchandise. The hearing started with what we and our partners at Scripps Howard News Service exposed in our investigation. What whistleblowers have done for us, in fact, could have prevented many of these uh, stores from being back in business. And followed with almost two hours of tough questioning. These retailers have violated the laws and we don't debar them, then shame on us. Anyone want to respond to that? Kevin Concanon, the head of the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, attempted to explain why disqualified vendors still accept food stamps, even after the USDA busts them for fraud, some as many as four times. While the vast majority of retailers and clients follow the rules, a few bad actors will always seek to exploit SNAP. But Concanon's own inspector general, the USDA's Phyllis Fong, testified that more could be done. The USDA has implemented regulations, and as a whole, the department could do a better job of implementing that. Food stamp scams cost taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars each year. Store clerks secretly ring up a case of beer as a box of cereal, or charge a hundred bucks on the card and give 50 in return. Repeatedly gaming the system for cash means recipients are even buying big ticket items. It is critical that we also focus our efforts on looking at how retailers bypass the system that we have put in place to control access. That's why the government permanently bans about a thousand retailers nationwide for fraud every year. But our investigation with Scripps Howard News Service revealed nearly a third of the disqualified sites were approved to trade in food stamps again. Scripps Howard exposed, at least in some cases, fraud you were not aware of. Is that correct? Yes, they did. The USDA says they're now doing more to combat fraud. That means stricter rules and stiffer penalties. But that's not enough for Chairman Issa. The next uh, uh, analysis on the level of waste has to be one that is independent from simply the USDA patting itself on the back for low fraud. In today's testimony, Concanon disputed what we exposed. Our results suggest that the issues may not be as widespread as reported by Scripps. Under Secretary, you say that we made major mistakes, you said we made major mistakes, but you haven't specified what they've been. After the hearing, we tried to get the Under Secretary to explain our discrepancies, but he and his staff couldn't give us an answer. Major mistakes and you're unwilling to admit it. Concanon or his staff never contacted us to correct our reports. Kristen Volk reporting from Washington. The USDA has a hotline and a new website for the public to report alleged fraud. You can find the number and the web address on our website, WPTV.com. Just look under the Scene on 5 section.